Well, hello again, welcome back. Um, I have just 10 minutes ago sat down and watched a video from Uchel at the Woods Creek workshop and he did some simple changes to his bench grinder and I've been thinking about doing that for a long time and I'm going to get start, make a start now. So I believe, and I haven't tested this, but I believe the wire wheel is the source of all the wobbling. Um, I'll just switch this on and you can watch it. And in fact, you can see you can see this the run out on here probably. I mean, I, I can see it from here. So the first thing to notice is this is a stamped steel centre. Um, I don't know quite how these pieces are bonded. Maybe they're just pressed into this this uh, steel ring. I noticed there was a lot of run out in this steel ring. It was all Pringle shaped. And then there's some plastic bushes that do fit quite well on here but I can see dents and dings all around here so I don't think that's working as it should but anyway let's just turn this on and see if we get any uh, improvement in the in the vibration see that that runs beautifully there's no I can't imagine that really being any better than that. If you look at that one, you can see that it's stamped off centre, or at least the contact pattern is off centre. Um, so those are as good as useless. And actually, that surface has been turned. So I've I've already must have already looked at these. Um, so what I want to do is come up with a, a device that clamps this interior on a larger surface area than just that just that rim hopefully it would fill this area if that's concentric and it would negate that dent there by spreading out the load on the whole surface reduce this down so that it fits on the shaft and also uses up as much shaft width as possible so that I've got full engagement of this nut. So I need to take that measurement when well, that's fully on there. You take that measurement and some measurements from this and come up with a little design. I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Well, one thing I noticed was that this surface here, which is what the reducing bush rides on, is all over the place and this side even more so it's actually been pressed in somehow I have no idea how that happened but I think in order to get a consistent diameter um, my best bet at this point is to press that out flat so that it's um, in one plane and then I think this internal dimension might return to what it should be um, to help with that I've just turned up a quick um, shape basically a shaped anvil type thing that roughly fits in here so I can push down this lip all the way around make it flat that's probably as good as I'm going to get it there's no major there's no major um, dip in this surface now. Don't forget that the... Um, I think I made a mistake, misunderstanding of this earlier in the video, but this clamping surface clamps against here. So this surface is only really important for a, a radial size. So it's got to stop, it's got to stop this flapping around on the, on the shaft and this one holds it perpendicular to the shaft. Well, I've done a quick uh, sketch. Um, this is more or less the shape of the inside of this hub. Um, but the device I want is pretty simple. I need a disc. 
that spans this gap and that needs to be 65 diameter it needs a cylinder protruding out of it 10 millimeters this is very much not to scale 10 millimeters will sit inside there without touching the one on the opposite side um, 25.4 millimeters across slightly under 5 8 bore for the shaft on this grinder and a pair of those will do the job I've accounted for the maximum length of shaft that I've got available and I've made these as thick and as long as I can as I can get away with without them fouling. There's a couple of millimetres clearance on the inside. Three and a half millimetres clearance on the inside. Let's make those 11. That gives me one and a half mil clearance. I don't think this sandwich is going to compress that much. And I found a bit of... Uh, 68mm aluminium that's been kicking around, so I will turn up a couple of those now.
Well, I've got these two parts made up, and I have tried them on the grinder, but still getting some balancing issues. So, so what I've done is I've um, set up this rod level in my vise, and I'm trying to balance this wheel. And if you look, you see there's a real heavy spot. So I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to clip out some of the wire here or add some sheet metal screws here. Well, after a bit of mucking around and trying different size screws, just, just wedge it in just to get an idea of how much balance I need. I've found that these two screws pretty much are to balance in any spot. So that's the, that's the size of the error. So whatever they weigh, I need to either add that to this side, or, or if I bring it in, I need to add proportionately more, or clip some out here that, that equates to the same amount. I'll be back shortly. Right, well I've added three sheet metal screws to both sides of this side of the wheel, and this side is still heavy. And I think basically what it is, is this, this um, piece of steel and the stamped out piece in the middle just aren't anywhere near carefully made. They, they run out in that direction, they run out in that direction, and I've been able to minimise that with these, with these uh, sort of hub reducers, but even so, and I've been able to minimise three quarters of the out of balance with this set of screws here but it's still not perfect. But I switch it on and you can see it um, at least doesn't walk across the table anymore. So. It does run quite a lot smoother. But if you hear that, I've now got another problem and that is that my bearings are on the way out. <laughs> Although they spin freely, and I can't feel any grinding noise or anything like that, can't feel any play in either end, but there's a, there's a bit of a whine coming from, probably from this end, I think. But that's a different project, I'll do that a different day. But um, I'm happy with that now, it's not gonna shake my grinding table to bits. Well, that wasn't a 100% job, but um, I think it's 90% better than it was, so I'm, I'm actually pretty happy. This grinder used to be bolted down to a really heavy table that's filled with hundreds of kilos of scrap underneath it and the whole lot used to shake. It was that out of balance. That's probably why the bearings are shot. Anyway, if I replace those bearings, I'll be sure to make a video about it and I think the next um, video I make will be back on Rick's clutch, which is still up on the mill. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.